On January 20th, President Biden came into office facing a list of issues that needed immediate action. The raging pandemic, the struggling economy, national demands for racial equality, foreign interference in our elections, and the aftershocks of armed rioters storming the nation's capital during a deadly siege. As we approach President Biden's 100th day in office this week, we're taking a look at how he's handled that laundry list of tough issues. And some new polls are showing a majority of Americans approve of the president's job so far. A Pew Research poll putting his approval rating as high as 59 percent, his highest marks coming for his handling of the pandemic. And tonight, News Nation's Joe Khalil has a look at Mr. Biden's first 100 days in office, along with the promises made and where things stand today. Day. Congratulations, Mr. President. Joe Biden swept into the Oval Office with a flurry of executive action, 19 orders and directives in three days, many of them rolling back Trump-era policies, returning the U.S. to the Paris Climate Agreement, renewing a commitment to science, removing the travel ban on foreigners from certain countries, halting construction of the border wall. Day one signaled a shift in both policy and posture from the previous administration. So we had a very busy and active day today. A return to formal White House statements and daily press briefings replaced tweets and call-ins to late-night political shows. And the clear focus... You know, this pandemic... And get us through this pandemic. The entire pandemic. Addressing the pandemic. The young administration inherited multiple successful vaccines. It would spend the next few weeks tackling the logistical challenge of getting those vaccines to states and into arms. President Biden's promised goal in December Vice seemed President ambitious. Harris ensuring that 100 million shots have been administered by the end of the first 100 days. By Inauguration Day, with the U.S. already vaccinating almost a million people every day, criticism that the bar was too low. Within days, a new goal of 150 million shots in arms eventually raised to 200 million, a benchmark reached in mid-April. Today, we hit 200 million shots and the 92nd day in office. To get it done, President Biden invoked the Defense Production Act to ramp up vaccination supplies, open more vaccination sites, and authorized more vaccinators, allowing medical students, veterinarians, EMTs, all to deliver shots. The motion is adopted. And the effort got a boost after Congress passed and President Biden signed into law the administration's $1.9 trillion COVID relief plan, achieving one of the president's main objectives, there is light at the end of this dark tunnel in the past year. While simultaneously failing at another, getting bipartisan support. This is a classic example of big government democratic overreach in the name of COVID relief. The bill passed without a single Republican vote in the House or Senate. The administration called the measure bipartisan, citing support among Republican voters and mayors. White House officials say it's one key part of the overall pandemic strategy. We need everyone to do their part, so please wear a mask, socially distance, and also go get vaccinated. After months of steadily rising COVID cases peaking in January at 313,000 in one day, the tide began to turn, dropping to an average of 52,000 in mid-March before rising slightly and leveling off. As of today, close to 230 million shots have been administered. 95 million Americans have been fully vaccinated. Based on these data, here's the bottom line. Getting a vaccine will help protect you. It will help protect others, and it will help us end this pandemic. And while the CDC reports more than 3 million Americans were getting vaccinated every day, those numbers have fallen off in recent days, raising concern about growing vaccine hesitancy at the same time new COVID variants are spreading in the U.S. Both could pose a challenge to public health and slow the economic recovery. Uh, we have a huge divide between those that are doing okay or well versus those who are continuing to suffer. The administration's rescue plan dished out $1,400 checks to most Americans, plus thousands more for families with children to stimulate the economy. Unemployment fell to 6% in March, its lowest level since the pandemic began, far better than its peak at 14%. But economist Mark Hamrick says the unemployment numbers don't tell the whole story. There's still going to be a, a sizable uh, component of the American uh, population which will continue to struggle 
uh, and will take some time to get back to their pre-pandemic condition. Data from the National Women's Law Center shows nearly 500,000 more women left the workforce than men, many having to remain home with children whose schools haven't reopened in-person classes. And my team will work to see that a majority of our schools can be opened by the end of my first 100 days. The president's grade on reopening schools is still unclear, in part because of shifting targets. At first, saying he wanted a majority of schools open, he later narrowed the target to kindergarten through eighth grade. Now, the vast majority of schools offer at least a hybrid of classroom and online learning, with just under half fully in person. So that was a lot in the first 100 days, and we're also expecting the administration to be embarking on a large infrastructure investment, historic in size, and at every step of the way, they've made climate policy an important priority. We're going to be highlighting both of those in our second look at this new administration's 100 days in office. That story running tomorrow. Reporting live tonight in Washington, D.C., Joe Khalil, News Nation.